does the wax there's one conference that disbanded oh, and that's why go. that's why idaho got the boot what? dechambeau leaned on his club and snapped the head right off at the pga gym <laughs> let's talk about that because <laughs> he's a meathead let's what i want to watch the video so ready to roll with this guy yeah perfect well welcome to the csn rundown we're gonna get right into it andrew barline founder cougar sports network the man ryan pettit former martin stadium DJ and women's basketball manager. Yep. And Aaron Croom, our number one super fan, holding it down. Starting right off the top, preseason rankings. Theo Lawson released uh, an article about um, just kind of how the rankings turned out. And I guess Washington State got votes. Well, I mean, yeah, they got six points and I mean, the 41st ranked team, according to Theo Lawson. So, so according to the poll that yeah. Theo cited. Yeah, according to the poll, it's looking like. They expect us to be about in the middle of the pack of the Pac-12. Which is bottom of the North. Bottom of the North. Is there Wait, any... Who is the best team in the South, according to it? Probably U- USC. U- nah, USC it's or Utah? Utah? Uh, I believe it's USC. Uh, yeah. I think Utah may be a couple levels lower well, on the yeah. rankings. I think they're oh, yeah. 19. Yeah, it's USC and then Utah. So, so it's Utah 19. Utah or? is ranked at 20 and USC is okay. ranked at 17. Utah is 17. USC is 17. And Utah is 20. 20. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to go back and forth all year. Yeah. yeah. But. Well, I mean, it's just kind of preseason stuff. It's really hard to predict. Well, preseason is like, an absolute joke. Yeah. I, you don't know what's happening. You don't even know who the quarterbacks are. The fact that people are voting for Washington But State, I think you know there's going to be some bottom of the barrel teams down in the South this year. Well, I mean. Yeah. In a coach's poll, though, didn't Leafs say a couple years ago that. Coaches' polls don't even oh, matter. Don't most matter. most teams don't even know who they the other teams are. Yeah, and coaches, they just look the at coaches the logos. Will probably be like, when I was a kid, Notre Dame was good, and I respect their coach. Notre well, Dame, I'll give them fifteen. Well, that's why USC <laughs> like, always has a leg up going into the con- going into the season because yeah. everyone remembers USC well, actually this playing year well. Different than most too. You don't know who's going to opt out, who's going to opt in, if the season's even going to happen. So, it's gonna yeah. be very like the coaches' poll this year is even more relevant. Yeah, it just than ever no before. Sense. It's just kind of people talking out and making yeah. shit up yeah. like it's kind of not even looking a real thing. at recruits and i mean i'm sp- i'm shocked that Alabama's wsu got won. as many votes as we did but i mean I, well, i'm excited for the, the season. last few years and i think yeah. rolovich has pretty good respect with the other coaches around the league well, even yeah. the players it seems like yeah well he was winning at hawaii i imagine yeah. that's like kind of difficult i mean i guess like players would like to go to hawaii in theory it, but it would be difficult it's not like a powerhouse team it's, you don't get media coverage playing it's in hawaii. quite difficult to recruit there i believe because their travel schedule is harder than anybody else in the country. Yeah. You got to fly out of Hawaii every time you're going on the road. Well, even last year when WSU baseball they played Hawaii. Yeah, it was, it's literally they're all just taking pictures a, of which travel, stadium waiting for the travel flights. nightmare because there's no you're not busing anywhere. You're flying everywhere out of Hawaii, but yeah. you also got to live in Hawaii. So it's kind of like playing in the yeah. AL West. Yeah, like you're just you're. Out there in the Pacific Northwest, you just, just get chewed. Well, it's ridiculous yeah. that Seattle's flying to Houston. Like, oh, how Houston's in the AL West blows so my mind. In the spring, Houston plays in Florida, and they're an AL West team. Yeah, explain that to me. They don't <laughs> even play in Arizona. They don't play in Arizona, <laughs> which is a bummer because we went down there and we tried to go to some games and they weren't even there. And yeah, then they canceled they, it, they so they it didn't matter. Them. But we were going to go to the Dodgers games though. I mean, we were two blocks from them. Didn't even get the option. No, we were two blocks from San Francisco. Oh, the the that Giant. Was, yeah, we were yeah, two we blocks were from the Giants. the Giants. But either way, it would have been fun to go down to some games. Yeah. yeah. Sucks to suck. Washington State hoops, though. It seems like LB trying to go pro. Correct me if I'm wrong. He did the same thing last year. But last year, it was a little more of like a... Like test the waters, but people Just would expect him. Just put his name him. out there to try to yeah, find but out you expect three. him to come back, sort of thing. Um, this year though, it doesn't really seem like that's the case because Elby's really, he, really good. He's really, yeah, he's <laughs> he really he good. took a, the same slack team that got their heads kicked in and embarrassed by Oregon in the Pac-12 tournament. He got a good coach, and then and they won the. Did they win half their games? Would they? They won the Pac-12 at? championship. They, so. they won the national championship. Oh, yeah. well, we won, yeah. the, we won yeah. the last game of last season. Yeah, that's true. We yeah, marked that down. national champions. Yeah, twenty twenty national champions. But but I mean, he, uh, he could come back. We don't. Ma- is it officially set in stone that he's gone, or does he still have the option? Well, it, it, the freedom of um, the NBA draft is just showing up here. He can. He has so much options. He can come back. He can go. It just. He has a lot of options. Well, if and if he comes back too, he has. 
three four-star recruits. It's insane. I mean, you can't even pronounce some of these guys' names. Well, I certainly can't. Um, Macedonia, that the first mm-hmm. one, he's ranked 109th out of the top 200 prospects. And we have 124th, Carlos Rosario, hope I'm saying that right too, California guy. And 195th, Deshaun Jackson, also California guy. Three four-star recruits. The last time we've had anything close to that was 2008 with Clay Thompson, Marcus Capers, and Hatham. Very so, promising with a coach yeah. like this. Yeah, yeah. Kyle, like, how is Kyle Smith doing this? If I was a prospect, I'm a four-star prospect in California. They're getting options. It's not like they settled on Washington State. Like, no. They had plenty of places to go. He, he sat down on the couch, and he convinced them to come Does there. he just it's show amazing. up with a PowerPoint, and he clicks yeah. through, like, why Pullman? Like, how does he yeah. do that? If I was a star in California, there's nothing anyone can tell me up in the north where it snows. Well, I mean, to get me so up there. He coached the Dons. Wasn't he? he was at San Francisco for quite a few probably years. Probably had connections through he that. He probably had connections. He was probably already looking at these people, yeah. scouting these people. Well, he was getting four star guys at San Francisco. Yeah. Well, I mean, It'd I remember when, I remember when the women's team here played San Francisco, and it was, it was, it was they had some good players. And, like, just watching. Did just, they kick our heads in? or? Because I can't our, quite remember. Our women's team's like middle of the road. They're, they're good. They have, we have really good players. We just also have a young team. And yeah. Cammy has been here for a couple years or three years now. I have no and idea. So I just dig her style. I, have, I love the crimson leather jacket. No, you know she kills the game. She, her she outfit, the her game. outfit game, and her post <laughs> her post game interviews always the best. Yeah. I and mean, when we're cleaning up and it, he, she's talking to social media guys, it is awesome. Listen, she's just so so serious, but also really passionate about what she's doing. Yeah, but uh, do you? Th- I'm curious, Aaron, mostly. If you're CJ Alby, if you come back, you get three four star guys to play with. And I thought that that might give him the freedom to leave. Because I, th- I think Alby's like a finish what you started kind of guy. Yeah. And I don't think he feels guilty leaving Washington State anymore now that Kyle has recruited some like big boy players. Yeah. It really but depends. also like if it, you come back, you get to play with them. So does that like yeah. does it push him away more than it pulls him back? It also depends on what his projections are looking like. If if he's looking high enough where he's gonna get taken, be able to get some minutes on an NBA team. He's, how many he's how many gone. rounds does the NBA have? Two. Okay. So it's gonna be interesting to see, but there's been a lot of guys who they know their next draft class or not draft class recruiting class really promising, but they still leave because you can really hurt your draft stock by coming back for another year as well. Yeah, especially if he comes back and. I highly doubt this would happen, but you know maybe he loses minutes or something because the team's so deep. Or he or gets yeah. over, deeper, I over guess. not necessarily overshadowed because he is such a terrific he, player. He would be but, the best player on the but, team. Best player on the team, but also things, it, things can happen. His point averages game. could go down bringing in those incredible players. I mean, his yeah. minutes could go down just to like, I mean, especially if he is wanting to, if he goes into the draft, you know, the next year after he comes back, he doesn't want to get hurt. He doesn't want to overplay. But he also doesn't want to be lose like the shine that he has now from this last season. Yeah, because he's going into this. I think this last season he averaged like eighteen something points a game. Yeah, his his slants were pretty good. But I, I talked to his high school coach Jerry Petty. Uh, this was like last winter, uh, and the interview is transcribed here. He told me some mid majors were after him. Washington came up to talk to him. I thought it should have been a lot more. He kind of had a chip on his shoulder from people not realizing how good he was and how effective a player he was. Yeah. My thought is, if he comes back to Washington State and the NBA doesn't want him, or at least give him the prestige and draft stock that he thinks he deserves, he's going to be on a tear. Yeah. He is going to be a terror with a chip on his shoulder at Washington State with three, four stars around him, young guys, and plus... The rest of Washington State's teams like kind of interesting. We, can, we have he, some pieces. Like you can also help great, mold but... these these recruits yeah. into even better players. Yeah. When it's not like LB was playing with nobody either. He had an incredible like support. Not even supporting cast. But all five of them. All, all five of our starters were yeah. always incredible. Is it Bonton or Bonton? I think it's Bonton. Bonton. He's. I mean, no. It, I I think Bonton's good. I, he got better. Just, there, he there, got, there were some games where he was a little turnover heavy, and I was like. Pass the ball, man. The turnovers <laughs> were a bummer, but I mean, he played really. I mean, especially the, he helped the, us win. He the, helped us the win. clay game. He went off. I mean, I think he's just definitely a play under pressure kind of guy as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's something we need too. I mean, WSU is 
for the long it wasn't it isn't always the best i mean those that championship we have in the raptors was given to us basically in like 1912 back in world war one and we had the team to beat (laughs) yeah our football team went undefeated and our basketball team like got handed a, a natty after people voted on yeah, it. Yeah, it, it was they looked later. back at the old records and were like, yeah, this team deserved they would have won it this year. So that yeah, March didn't exist. Yeah. Tell you what, back in World War One, man, you couldn't touch Wazoo Athletics. We yeah. were we were the juggernauts. Uh aside from that, let's get into Pat Nunn. He just decided that he wants to opt out for um I don't know if it's entirely COVID related. I think part of it is related to like the, the players union, unity. I don't know what the correct term is for it. Yeah, is it the We Are United? Yeah. Yeah. I love, side note, I love how the Big Ten did their own We Are United type players union, if you want to call it that. And it was very similar to the PAX, mm-hmm. but at the very end of it, it's like, we want free Big Ten network for our parents. Yeah, PAX like, yeah. Pac-12 if I play in the Big Ten and I'm going to catch COVID in Iowa in the middle of September, my mom better be watching me for free at home. <laughs> like, yeah, these, I love how that's the concern they came Pac-12 up with. These Pac-12 guys were like... <laughs> Uh, we don't even want Pac-12 Network, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll just yeah. uh, we'll just get on Reddit, get yeah, on Reddit yeah. streams. But... Reddit streams, yeah. Thanks, but Larry. imagine they do uh, they do that, like they give in, but they're like, we're gonna do the MLB style, but we're gonna black out yeah, the game. Thank God, I we're watch... gonna black out the the regional game. Thank, thank God, I can watch the game that I want to watch at 11 p.m. <laughs> MLB blackouts. I don't know how they get away with that. Like, Especially what, now. What do they gain from it? Uh, like back people... back in the day, I guess when you would black out the it's... radio in World War One, you know. It's like, yeah, you can you can walk it's down and go to the game. I it's guess it's essentially but... forcing people to show up to the game, but the fact that they're still blacking out games when you can't go to the game <laughs> is just it blows my mind. Well, what's even better is we were talking last night with our buddy Carter, and he said, or maybe it was one of you guys, somebody said it that there are states that don't even have major league baseball oh, teams, said, and they're blacked out. I'm pretty sure from watching baseball, and they don't even have a team. I'm pretty sure Iowa, like, there's a map. I. Like don't have all my facts. Don't have my, but I saw facts it on Twitter. Twitter. Midwest. There, there's a map. There's a map showing the blackouts of different major league teams. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure Iowa gets zero major league baseball team games if they're not on like. That'd be interesting ESPN to find out. If, if any, if any people that Is watch this. this no, it's Iowa. It's Iowa. <laughs> if any people, if any people decide to watch but this I mean, podcast that's your, that's... that are from Iowa, we should ask them if they can watch any MLB games on the network. <laughs> My Twitter handle's up there. They'll find it. And they better hit me up because I'd love to know if Iowa yeah. can watch or any or any or state, any and state that has them, completely blocked out. Tell games. them I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry I lied to everyone. But anyway, Pat Nunn, we got to get back to that. He is pretty significant. Like Pat Nunn is important to Washington State's defense, which we know. I mean, Less struggles, than stellar. struggles at times. But it could change well, under the this team. I mean, when you the teams wearing blue and gold, struggles a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a game. Well, I mean, yeah, exactly. When you give up that many points to one of the highest scoring games WSU has had, and you're giving up the same amount it of points. It wasn't even the fact that they gave up that many points. Well, I don't want to say gave up, because it seems that UCLA really turned a corner. And their head coach is Chip Kelly. Let's be honest. Chip yeah. Kelly didn't forget how to coach football. He's still very good. But also, you he shouldn't. He just doesn't get uh, it, Phil writing him checks. Yeah, yeah, he's not getting Phil's money. It makes <laughs> yeah. it a little tough. But if but if you're still putting up over fifty points in a game, you shouldn't expect to lose. That's how well, I looked at it. We think, think about think about Connor Halliday. I think it was 2013 against Cal. Might be the incorrect year, but Connor Halliday had a game against Cal. He threw for 734 yards. I think that's right, and they lost. 700. 34 yards. That's, I think he put up 59 points. I think we lost 59 to 60. That's tough scene. Because at, at that time, uh, we had this kicker. I can't think of his name. I don't want to get it wrong. But, like, we had, like, the kickoff guy hit the PAT, and it was just Shank City. The second it touched his foot, I mean, I was in middle school at the time. Like, the second his foot touched the ball, I looked away. Because I was like, he missed he it. Missed We're it. leaving. And I, I've never seen, like, my dad be so angry. I think that was the first time I ever heard my dad cuss in my whole life. Was after Shank City, we lose a game, fifty nine to sixty. Yeah, the double doink. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Oh, uh, do do you know his completions too? I think he was the kickoff guy, and they threw him on PATs. No, it was no, like no. early, early in the leech. No, Halliday, Halliday. He threw for seven hundred thirty four. He yards. probably threw the ball ninety times. Seven hundred thirty four touchdowns or seven hundred thirty four <laughs> yards. <laughs> that's, that's six touchdowns. Game. And then afterwards, and he drank his million yeah, beers. Yeah. yeah, but his what was com- the percentage again? Forty eight for sixty nine. Nice. nice. Imagine throwing seventy times in a game. 
Well, do you remember that game against I'm Oregon losing. years ago when uh, their defensive coordinator, he worked for the Pac-12 Network after, he said it was absolute BS that Leach was throwing the ball when the Cougs were down by like three touchdowns. I think Halliday threw it 89 times. Like, Connor Halliday was basically an MLB pitcher. Like, they had him on a pitch count. It's like, dude, you can only throw 300 footballs this uh-huh. week. We're you over. threw 200 in practice, man. We need 100 for the game. We don't have any time. You're over your 100. We got we to gotta bring, in, like, bring in the arm. Bring yeah. in the arm. Yeah, so the Washington lost to Cal 60-59. to 59 <laughs> When, is it Quinton Bre- Breshers? Breshers? The kicker? That, na- that name sounds the right. The 19-yard field goal attempt missed. Because it's like PAT. Halliday had driven the Cougars from their own 30 to the Cal 2. Couldn't score. Oh and so they tried gosh. to kick the 19. Tough. Tough scene. Yeah, anyway, defensive collapses with none out for his personal reasons. It's going to be weird, man. We just talked about preseason polls and how they're fake because it doesn't make any sense. But that's a guy Every that team really get... hurts that preseason yeah. votes for Washington yeah, State. Yeah, but, but here's the thing, though. As the season goes on, more and more people, or at least until it starts, yeah. more and more people are going to choose to opt out, and they have you know total freedom to do that. I don't judge mm-hmm. them for it. I would probably oh. opt out. Yeah. Um, Unless, nonetheless, nonetheless yeah. though... What are we doing here with all these rankings? Why are we even ranking college yeah, football? Why are we even trying? Before like, what what happens when like Alabama's quarterback comes up with COVID in week four and they're ranked two in the country and they win the next week? Are they going to drop in rankings after they won a game? I think they did that to him last year. Because right? it's like, did they really? I'm pretty sure when Tua went down, I think they won and they went down in the. Okay. Well, I mean, when Bama <laughs> just. <laughs> but then they but they schedule their like yeah. what. Week seven or yeah, they had they Appalachia usually, State week usually, seven. <laughs> yeah, when Bama's playing Central high school guy. teams weekly, yeah. I mean, you got Arkansas State week ten. You know, just because you just because you just because you like put up sixty points against a high school team doesn't mean you're necessarily a good team. Well, like, here's the thing, man. We we well, lost. Uh, I mean, obviously, they're, obviously, they're a great team, but yeah, they 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 throw their softballs in there for <laughs> their part of their schedule. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, even the was it the the Marlins? They want Bama. They want Bama. Dude, the Marlins don't want anyone who is able-bodied. I will tell you <laughs> well, that much. I know a week ago, <laughs> they had 13, it was like 13 players on their roster that did not have COVID. 13 that did not? Yeah, they had 13 <laughs> active players. So their whole team is like their single-A club? They got the short-season guys? Yeah. No, everyone's, just playing, everyone's just playing both sides of the ball. You got, you got nine people out there playing both sides of the right, ball. What do they time. have to lose? They're going to the club. They're having a good time. <laughs> They're five and one. I mean, cut you, them some slack. Do you think? <laughs> do you think this can last though? I mean, they because you no know, MLB's done. And it upsets you, me because Oakland's been pretty hot the last few days. Yeah, but well, uh, I mean, they play. They've been playing the Mariners. So. Yeah, Mariners need to. Hey, tank. this is their year, man. They shouldn't have yeah. won last. Hey, night. hot take: If you are a real Mariners fan, you're taking and you for and tomorrow. you are cheering for them to win games, you are delusional. Because the season doesn't matter. If anyways. you're actually a Mariners fan, you want them to go like ten and fifty. That's what a yeah, real Mariners fan wants. Day, yeah, you need to be worse than Pittsburgh. That's which the is tough. Thing. That's very tough, tough to do. Yeah. Pittsburgh or Detroit, very tough to be worse than that. Uh, Detroit might turn things around, but yeah. after they lost Verlander, they just kind of like didn't have anything left. Well, they're they're doing a good rebuild right now, better than the Mariners have tried. They're t- for granted this rebuild from the Mariners. Very exciting. I know you guys don't care, but <laughs> big Oakland guy. Big Oakland guy. I, I just want him to keep Chapman. Chapman, Olsen, Simeon can walk. I don't care. Yeah. They're going to keep him on. That's it. My team is He's got a laser. <laughs> Absolute laser, laser show. My team is Battle Creek Bombers. That's all I care about. They're, they're winning like hell. <laughs> Go right Bombers now. Northwoods League. Man. Yeah. They're going to win that pod. I think yeah, their but, record, they're I mean, like 26 and 11, and there's like I think a they've, week left in the season. I think they've only, they've, they've beaten the Mac Daddies, that made up team that they created. <laughs> it's a fake team. Uh, I think every time. I think they've, they they've been undefeated against. Every the time I get on Twitter, I are see, they still playing yeah. seventy plus games? Northwoods. No, they're playing like forty, fifty. Or but something. only playing against. There's only three teams. Actually, yeah, that's forty te- forty games against three teams. The Kalamazoo Growlers, uh, the, the Mac Daddies, and uh, Battle Creek Bombers. Speaking of how many games you play, UConn football, they're playing zero. <laughs> so let's talk I mean, about that. Might be better. Their record this year, not playing, might be better than their previous records. Yeah, so they've won like two of their last nineteen. What's the what's the stat? Well, I mean, last season when they were in the AAC American, yeah, when they were in the Mar- they they the went American they they went zero and eight in the their true conference. juggernauts of, of college football. Yeah. They went they well, went I mean, zero and they eight. They have our they have year. our national championships or national champions every year. UCF football, 
go, baby. Let's go, Knights. Yeah, I'm actually a big Knights guy. I'm pretty thrilled with how they did that. I thought yeah. it was very tasteful. And everybody who got upset about it, I don't think has a sense of humor. Yeah. Like, you definitely get bullied in middle school if you're the kid that was upset about that. That was so funny. <laughs> it's, it was like uh, bar, it was like Barstool ran their athletic department for a week. They are like, we're the champions. I mean... They notable, did beat notable, Auburn, though. Notable alumni, Blake Bortles. So you kind of have to be. I mean, Blake of the year. Like <laughs> Blake of I the may year. still if they have if they have NFL this year, I might still draft Blake Bortles or just pick him on free agency. He's not signed with the team yet. But you can still pick up undrafted. Yeah. But I mean, or, or like free agent, you can still pick up free agents. I mean, just to have them. Just back, in case. Back it's, to it's UConn. Good to have. Well, back because to UConn. think about it, this is the most this is the most likely season that they're going to be cycling through quarterbacks. If a team pick gets COVID. And they have nobody that's like been a starter, or they have a you know a rookie. Yeah. They might want to just save that rookie and pick up Bortles, you know. Maybe. It's not a bad idea. I mean, he might just be going back to construction. Rip and six. Rip and six. Oh, that's the funniest thing I ever saw. But anyway, UConn though, they're not playing a single game. They're independent. Like this is their first year as an indie team. Yeah. It's they couldn't get anybody. anybody. But well, here's the don't... thing. We were talking about this. Notre Dame has the clout. If you're gonna be an independent. It's because you don't need the special TV deals of the conference. It's like being game. in a conference, like being in a union. It'd be a pretty good run through game to go through UConn. No? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for Notre, UConn. Yeah, but Notre Dame, Notre Dame has the cloud. They don't, they don't need the conference union to negotiate benefits for money and stuff. Yeah. They, they have the historical prominence, and even though they're vastly underperformed year after year, uh, they they still have that that title, you know, and so. You know they got picked up by, was it, ACC? Yeah, ACC. Yeah. I mean they're they have a full ACC schedule. Yeah, they got lucky with that. They can af- yeah. they can afford to, like play UConn, games as an independent, but UConn it, it's like it's like if COVID them. hit in twenty thirteen. Yeah, the biggest. You think Idaho? You think Idaho is going to get a single game as an independent in twenty thirteen? No, no, you're done. They sh- they <laughs> should have just stayed independent because they, this is probably the easiest independence they could go against because Notre Dame's gone. So Notre Dame's obviously going to win the season as independent, like. In all the independents. <laughs> it, it, like how the Northwoods League had their pod with the, yeah. the Kalamazoo Growlers, the Mac Daddies who were made up, and the Bombers. Yeah. The college football could have done that. Like, UConn and I, if Idaho was still an indie team, UConn and Idaho would play each other, like, every week. <laughs> yeah. And they'd have, a, like, a fake made-up team for the third pod. <laughs> well, what they could do, go to the so, Kibbe Dome. Stay at the Kibbe Dome Kibbe and Dome play bubble. every week. I'm so the pro eighth wonder of the so, world. like, every game would just be your 6-7 and seven bowl game. It would be amazing. i tell you what. The Stevenson Towers in South Side of Pullman, no one should ever live there for any reason whatsoever. But they exist. So my freshman year, there was a tough time. What if we had the Kibbe Dome bubble and every team was forced to live in the Stevenson complex? There's Pac-12 there's... gets the South Tower. The SEC will get the East Tower. What do you, you have, know? 10 guys in every room? That's basically what they do to students. They have kids living with <laughs> RAs now. Well, I mean, there's very, very <laughs> and then we have a bus. We living. have a we have a bus. The corner, the corner club, perfect corner club in Moscow. They have a party bus that shuttles them back and forth to Kibby for their game. If you lose, you have to walk home. I think they you should lose just, their walks home. They shut down yeah. all of WSU residence halls, fill them all with the all Power Five schools. I mean, Idaho could do it. <clears throat> Idaho could do, Idaho it, too. Could do it too. Stubby's Tuesdays would be crazy. <laughs> and that's, that's why we need a Pac-12 yeah, snitch that's, line. That's, 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 the Pac-12 snitch line. Every every player has like some wristband they can't cut off, and if they cut it off, they can't play anymore. Yeah. Theo was so everywhere ahead. you go, Theo was thinking ahead. I think he's already thought that they're yeah. they were gonna do it in the Kibbe Dome and live in Pullman and be like, yeah, they're going to Stubby Tuesday every night. And he also had a tweet about the snitch line. So I I honestly think Theo is ahead of his time. He's the reporter that 2024 Washington State football needed, and he's just people aren't seeing it now. He's a visionary. Regardless, Utah, I mean, well, Utah, UConn, rather, not playing any games. I don't know how I feel about that, because how is that affecting, like, their athletic department? They're doing America a service. Well, I mean, well they're fo- terrible. But... I mean, their football team, I don't think, is gaining their revenue that their women's basketball team has ever brought. Like, the rev- women's basketball team brings in all their <laughs> women's revenue. Women's basketball dealers. team certainly doesn't lose money there. Yeah. Do you think no. the football team loses money? Uh, like they have to. I mean, there's no re- no they gotta way. Have, they got to have some TV it's pretty, deal. It's pretty hard. Well, to lose as an independent, money. I guess not. Maybe, maybe it's last hard to year. lose money as a football team. If you're not in a conference, but you though, can find out yeah. a way. Like Larry Scott botches everything, especially his tennis career. He went like one in nineteen. He was a bum. But uh, he totally botched the Pac-12 network contract stuff. The money that came in for these schools, the revenue was way less than what it was projected to be. 
And I think that still helps a lot of programs like profit, not necessarily lose money, but maybe break even. Um, so if you don't have that as independent, UConn probably was going to lose money this year, especially with no ticket sales. How are they getting revenue? Well, now they're for sure losing money. Well, I see now. No, because now they don't have to pay anybody like to run the game. Well, the only they money they're losing is scholarships. And let's yeah, let's yeah. be real with that. Like it's fake. What? Like tuition money isn't even real. Well, like, I mean, where, where do you think your tuition money goes? I mean, that's why. They, yeah. <laughs> like, let's be honest. It just like sits in a bank account somewhere. Well, I don't, so I don't did, have all my well, facts. Well, did you see? <laughs> but well, I, like, where does it go? They hand out scholarships like they're going out of style. Did you see that the NCAA is? I don't know if they've confirmed it or they're thinking about it. They're thinking about allocating, like a billion dollars to give to, to team to buy out basically to not have a season and then say think, that one more time well, not 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 have well a season, just just to it's, cover losses it's, it's basically if if teams are going to be so hurt financially by the season not happening it's basically like they're propping these these programs up i think they're going to struggle i think every like power five program or even maybe more can get the maximum of like 50 million and it will just come on, just come in shy under a billion. Interesting. And but I mean that's if every team takes the maximum, and some teams won't even need to take the maximum, because then it's on an interest. It's an interest rate. It's not like they're just giving them out, you know, like a stipend. They're it, it's an interest rate, and so they're gonna have to pay more if they. So I mean, the more they take, so if WSU takes the maximum, and they can't afford to pay it off. There's our, our tuition is going to rise again because they're not going to be able to pay off that. Tuition rises yeah, every, every year. year. So I, mean, I love how five years ago they lowered tuition 10%, and then every year since they've raised it 25 and we just got back to where we started. Yeah, I mean, that, so... I mean, <laughs> is, I, there, is there anything more on brand for a state university than that? No. Yeah, I think the NCAA, NCAA bailout is a good idea, but at the same time, it, for smaller schools that try to take it, it may hurt them in the long run if they're always going to have this payment that they're going to have to pay. It's going to hurt them in the long run, but... Right now, they won't have a program if they if they don't take well, it. Well, because they don't want they don't want schools to have to lay off their athletic department or to have employees take furloughs. They don't want any of that. That's fair. Which I, I think it's awesome that they're doing that. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm sure Larry out. Scott would probably say no. Pac-12 doesn't need it. We were good. <laughs> Lair Bear, you gotta love him. MLB, NBA, what is going on here? How does Major League Baseball get away with? Just like playing games willy nilly where they want to go and how and like traveling all that jazz, and the NBA is straight up locked down. Small teams. I mean, Manfred. Yeah, and Man Manfred is just incredible. So. Dude, Rob. I mean, I mean that, that's it, he's basically they're taking totally more. different approaches. They could have. And I feel like the writing's on the wall because there's already some, nor some teams in the Northeast. There was some big COVID yeah, breakouts. Phillies it's got hit tough. with it because of the. Marlins, I no, Marlins. yeah, yeah, because of the Marlins. So what? What was the aftermath of that? Because that was a couple days ago. Do we it's, know? It spread to a couple teams. Are there any star players out because of it? Um, not currently, like, but the Marlins. There's a lot of games that. Got, well, there's a lot of games that aren't being played, and it's it's tough on standings, and it's it was tough on the Phillies because they were out for however many days, almost a week, yeah, and then the game week. the the day they come back, they have to face Garrett Cole in New York. Good. good luck. That's what I love to hear. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, they, there was talks about if they can't play all these games on by the end of the season, just going off a win percentage, which... I hate that. Which Marlins, which the Marlins maybe. could win it, if that's the case. They, they played six games. Would you say games. they were earlier? Five and one? Yeah. Five and one. Played They're six top games. Of the conference. Or top, top of the division. Yeah. yeah.